Good evening and welcome to another prayer meeting with Cottondale. My name is Chad and um, uh, tonight we're going to uh, talk about some various scriptures. We're not going to go through a single passage this evening, but they all focus on one thing that I've been thinking about recently and that is the power of the Word of God. God uses His Word. He does things that we can't. And uh, when he speaks, things happen. Um, he has all authority in heaven and on earth, right? He created everything by his word. He said, let there be, and it was. So God's word is inherently powerful. And, uh, and that's how God works in us, in his people, in his church, in the world. And, um, and so that's what I want to talk about and pray through tonight. So we will jump right in. We'll see if we can't make it a little bit shorter tonight. Um, the first verse uh, that we're going to talk about is um, Acts chapter 20, verses 32. This is um, Paul's um, address to the Ephesian elders there, if you're familiar with that passage in the book of Acts. It says, And now I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Now, when you're reading that passage, it's easy to gloss over what's being said here, but if you pause and think about what Paul is saying and reflect on it, he's actually saying something quite profound. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. So he's leaving the, uh, he's, he's leaving the Ephesian elders. He has called for them because uh, he didn't go on his journey back, final journey back to Jerusalem there in Acts. He called the elders to him. Uh, and he told them that there's a good chance he probably would never see them again. And so he's commending them to God. So that's comforting right there. Paul, who had spent a lot of time with them and strengthened them and encouraged them, you know, they, they leaned on Paul heavily, I'm sure. They relied on him a lot. And probably some of them thought, you know, well, what are we going to do without Paul? But he said, no, I'm going to commend you to God. You don't need Paul. All you need is God. God's going to take care of you. I commend you to God. And here it is, to the word of his grace, to the word of his grace. So this is um, almost certainly the testimony of the gospel. The word of God's grace is God's grace in Christ, that God loves sinners. God saves sinners who don't deserve it. That's what grace means, is receiving what you don't deserve. We um, receive uh, the, the word of God's grace is the good news of the gospel, of what God has done through Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection to forgive us of our sins, even though we don't deserve it. That is the word of God's grace. And of course, that could be expanded out to all the scriptures, because if you read the New Testament carefully, you'll see that they understood that all the Old Testament pointed ultimately to what God was going to do and did do through Jesus Christ. So I think we're justified in saying that the word of his grace encompasses all of God's words uh, but most specifically the gospel message. But notice what he says about the word of his grace. What does Paul have to say about the word of God's grace? He said it is able to do what? To build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So that's just, that's just huge. To me, that's just so powerful. The word of his grace is able to build us up. So we like to think about, and so just, just think about this now. It's powerful, right? We like to think, oh man, what can make us, you know, how can we grow as Christians? What can strengthen us as Christians? What do we need to do as a, and, and maybe corporately we might think of what do we need to do as a church to build this church, to help this church grow spiritually and even numerically? You know, what, what, what do we need to do? And we oftentimes, and myself included, and I'm, and I'm not saying other things are bad, don't get me wrong, but, you know, we can do all kinds of like cool, fun, hip things, right, that we might think might help. But the Bible actually tells us one thing that is guaranteed to build up the church, and it is the word of his grace. So we can try all kinds of other things that we want. I'm not saying everything is bad, but what I'm saying is we have one thing that God promises is going to build his church, and that is the word of his grace, the word of God. And so... Um, and so I think we can take great comfort in that, right? You can take great comfort individually that as you seek God, as you study his word, as you are just 
have His Word spoken into your life through church attendance, through fellowship with other believers, um, through serving others, and how and however God's Word comes into your life in many different avenues, through many different ways. That and that alone really is able to build you up. Okay, and so. That should, I mean, it's encouraging. It's encouraging to me as a pastor, right? Because oftentimes you just feel this great burden of what am I going to do to help the church grow? And, but the Bible says the Word does the work, right? The Word does the work. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to be committed more to the Word than we have ever been. And then let God do through His Word what only the Word of God can do. And then the second thing it says is that to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. This is amazing that the Word is able to give you an inheritance. Inheritance in the Old Testament language, in Old Testament inheritance related to the promised land. In the New Testament, right, that language of inheritance kind of gets taken up and, and heightened, heightened to mean not the physical promised land, but to mean our our eternal inheritance, the the new creation, the new heavens, the new earth, our final and ultimate salvation where we get God and all that belongs to him. Remember how Jesus says, um, uh, you know, or, or Paul says, um, uh, we're every, uh, how does he put it? Um, he says, we, we uh, at one point Paul says that he possesses everything. Okay, that uh, as 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 Christians, we're we're children of God, and children owns it all, right? And so, our uh, ch- uh, or, I mean, <laughs> we're children of God, and God owns it all, right? And so, we're heirs of God, right? Because you, if you, children are the heirs, they inherit what their their parents possess, right? They inherit it; they're heirs. Okay, well, we're children of God, and God owns it all. Okay, and so that means that everything belong the whole everything belongs to us. We get so worried about all this thing, but God's but you know God says we already own it all. So while we scrounging around looking for this and that, God has already promised us everything, and it's the word of God who gives us. It is the word of God that gives us that secures for us this inheritance. And if we cling to the word of God, we are God's children because it's His word. If we listen to our, you know, we, you might we we might could say you know, um. We, we listen, or we should, right, listen to our parents, right? The one who listens to his father is his father's son, right? Um, when we listen to God and his word, we are rightly called his children because we listen to him, right? That word that we listen to is the sign of our sonship, of our, uh, of, um, that we, that we are children of God. And if we are children of God, then we have this inheritance and it's all through the word of his grace. Okay. So let's, let's pray through this. Pray for God's word to build you up personally. Pray for a particular weak area of your life. The, remember we just said that God's word, the word of his grace is able to build you up. And Paul was commending the Ephesians to God's word. And so they don't need him. They need God's word. And if you have that, then you have all that you need, right? And so, and we need this both individually and corporately. But first, just pray personally. Maybe there's a weak area of your life. Why not meditate on a scripture that deals with that area of your life and pray about it and let the word build you up in that area. And then next, pray for God's word to build up our church. Please, pr- please, I, I, you know, I'll beg you, pray for our church. Pray that God's word would build us up. Pray that God's word would do what we can't do, that it would build us, that it would strengthen us, that it would save the lost and sanctify the, the saints and grow and multiply and do what only he can do. So take some time and pray for that for our church family. Next, think about our inheritance in Christ and how the Word gives it to us. Think about all that belongs to us through God. Think about all that He's going to give to us when it comes time to inherit the world. Remember in the Beatitudes? You remember the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5? Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Right? It all belongs to us because it all belongs to God. Okay? And so we just got to wait patiently for it at the proper time. Right? Think about how the Word gives it to us and pray that God would guard you for that inheritance by, by the Word, right? The Word is what's going to keep us for that inheritance, right? If we stray from the Word, 
we'll risk losing our inheritance. Okay? Not that I think you can ultimately lose your salvation or anything, but, um, but if you truly belong to God, the Word is going to keep you in. The Word is going to do it. And so pray that God would. The, 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 the warnings in the Bible are there for a reason. And so pray that God would guard you from sin, guard you from temptation, and He does that by the Word. The, the, more, the more the Word is being poured into your life through Bible study, through a corporate worship, through intimate spiritual fellowship with other believers, and so on, the much more difficult it's going to be for the, for the devil to get a foothold into your life. And so pray through these things. And join back with me when you're done. All right, we're going to jump to another passage here. And this is Ephesians chapter 4. It says, He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we ought to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Okay, so let's jump back here. Okay. So it says he gave the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. Now, uh, you'll say, well, where's the word of God in this passage? Well, it's right here. What did the, what did the apostles do? Well, they were the official representatives of who? Of Jesus Christ. And specifically of what? Of what Jesus taught, right? They were the, those, those chosen 12 11 minus Judas plus others that he appeared to, most particularly the Apostle Paul, right? Jesus appeared to the Apostle Paul, and he specially commissioned this, these, these few men and gave them unique authority within the early church to, to lay the foundation of the church, okay? But what did they do? They taught, us what, they taught us what Jesus taught, right? They had a unique, because they had received... Um, had seen the risen Lord Jesus with their own two eyes, and most of them had had walked personally with Jesus during his earthly ministry. They were in a unique position to do what? To give us the words of Jesus. That's what the apostles do, is they give us Jesus' words, Jesus' teaching. The prophets do what? Give us the word of God. The evangelists do what? Preach the gospel of God, which is the word of God. Shepherds and teachers do what? They teach us, they help teach us what the apostles have handed down as the truth, right? They, they carry the forward, the apostles' uh, teaching from Jesus. They, they carry that forward, and they remain in, um, in one place, typically, while apostles typically had the, the, the job of traveling around teaching, okay? But all the, all the, the point is, is that God, God notice who, who gave these. God gave these to the church, Okay. God gave these leaders to the church. Le church leaders are given by God. Okay, But the point in giving, them, giving these to the church is what does all of these roles have to do? It has to do with handing down God's word. And when the, the people in these roles pass down God's word, what happens? The saints are equipped for the work of the ministry. The, the body of Christ is built up. As, as the Word keeps being taught and as the Word keeps ha doing work in our hearts and in our minds and in our churches because it is being handed down by the teachers and shepherds and leaders of the church, what happens is that we will attain, that is, we'll grow till we achieve unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, right? So, again, the Word does the work. The leader's job is to pass on the Word of God, but the Word of God is what does the work. And the Word of God does what? It unifies us, right? If we are not united as a church, that is not of God. It is of Satan. And that is because we are not focused on the Word as we ought to be and thinking critically in light of the Word as we're supposed to be. We're supposed to grow in knowledge of God. That one's pretty clear there. And we're supposed to mature, right? To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so, you know, we're supposed to be like Christ. Obviously, we, we can't be Christ, but we're supposed to be like Christ. And so we're here, we're little Christ, little Christians, little Christ, 
Okay, but we got a lot of room to grow. Okay, we got a lot of room to grow. Okay, but what does that? What gets us from here to here? Well, it's the Word of God that gets us from here to here. Okay, so it's and so we don't. He goes on here, it says, so that we may no longer be children, right? So we don't want to be children, but what gets us from children to mature manhood? It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. We don't want to be children. You know, I've heard it said before, and, you know, I think if we're honest, we can all admit that it's true, but, you know, I I thought I would be further along in my spiritual journey than I am now, just to be honest with you. And I think most of us can testify to that, right? And... It's a great tragedy to see sometimes people who've been Christians for decades even, but they see it still sometimes, sometimes, I'm, I'm trying not to be judgmental here, but maybe you've had this experience. Sometimes it just seems like they're just not very mature in their faith, okay? We, we can't let, we, we just can't allow that to happen. We cannot accept that in our own lives and or in our own hearts. I don't want to be a baby Christian my whole life. I want to mature so that I'm no longer a child but that happens through God's Word, through reading and studying the Bible, getting involved in a local church and in its ministry where I'm being poured the word, the Word's being poured into me and I'm pouring the Word into other people. I'm being invested in and I'm investing other people and I'm building a tight network of relationships of Christians uh, where we're speaking truth into each other's lives and we're sharing life together. That is how we grow so that we're no longer children. If you're still a child, you're tossed to and fro by the waves and carried by every wind of doctrine. There's some people who they believe everything they see on TV or, or, or every book that they read or everything that they see on social media, whatever some guy says with a Bible in his hand, and they think that they should believe it. And, and they're like children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And that says, no, we... No, we have to mature into manhood, but that comes by the Word of God. Then it says, rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head. So again, look, speaking the truth. So what does the apostle, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers do back in verse 11? They do this. They speak the truth of God. And when you speak the truth of God, we do what? We grow up in every way into the head, into, into Christ. So all this points to to what? To the power of um, of God's word. That's what that's what this all points to is the power of God's word. It is God's word that builds the church because Jesus said, "I will build my church," and He does that through His word. And so, um, and so the takeaway is we need to be more committed to the word of God than we ever have, especially especially now. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, yeah, we didn't read that verse, but it's okay. We'll jump to the end here. All right, so prayer. Pray for the word to bring unity in our church and in the church, right? Unity is a gift from God. It is worked by the Spirit and by the word, okay? Um, you know, I would say right now we have a very unified church, but it, um, and that's a, that's a gift from God, but... Um, I'm sure it hasn't always been the case here, and then and other churches and other places are, are experiencing division, and not just our not just local churches, but I would say the church capital C here, the church capital C as a whole, especially in America, seems seems very divided right now, and um, uh, politics and um, all kinds of issues that, that are going right now wants, tries to divide people, and that's what the world wants to do. But it's the Word that brings unity. So just pray that God would just keep our church unified and pray that He would unify the church, capital C. Pray that all His people who truly know Him would be able to unite under the Word of God. Pray that the Word would make us mature, no longer children. That just, uh, we need it. I need it. And so let's, let's pray for it. Let's pray that God would just grow us, you know, mature us, make us men, women of God. We're going to need it more than ever. And not just that, but God needs to do that for us so that we can help other people, right? Parents have to be mature because mature parents take care of the children, right? Children need mature parents, right? If the, ch- if the parent never grows up, then the children never has a, then the child never has a parent. And that's a problem because children can't take care of themselves, okay? And so we need, maturity is for us, 
but it's also for others, right? God matures us so that we can help someone else along the way who needs help. And so, and so I pray that God would mature us, not just so that we can be mature Christians, but because we need to become more mature because we need to be in a position where we can help other people. We don't need to stay babies our whole lives because what do babies do? They take, take, take because they can't, they, have, they can't give because they're babies. Babies can't give. They can't take care of themselves. They have to take, take, take because that's just what a baby does. But, it, but if you stay a baby forever, that's a problem. Babies are, it's okay to be a baby when you're supposed to be a baby, right? But after a certain period of time, you're not supposed to be a baby anymore. And so there's a point where we need to stop taking and start giving. But that, has, that can only happen if we mature and maturity happens by the word of God. So may God give us a church full of mature believers. And then pray that we would speak the truth in love to help others grow. That's what it says, speaking the truth in love. We have to learn to speak the truth in love to one another. Sometimes the truth hurts, but we still should say it. But it must be in love. But don't let it confuse you. Some people say, well, if you love people, you'll never say anything that hurts them. That's not true. We have to speak the truth, but we have to speak the truth in love. Okay, there, there, you can do both, right? And so we're, we're to speak the truth. The truth is of primary importance. And then we have to speak it with the right heart in love. But we can't let this false idea of love, this godless idea of love that says, if you love me, you'll never tell me I'm wrong. That's not love. That's satanic. Okay? We speak the truth, but we speak it in love. And when you do that, that's what helps people grow. Not, not, not saying anything. Not just saying, oh, whatever, you know. That's not how it works. Okay, so, so think about this. Pray through these things and join back with me when you're done. Okay, last, uh, cut, last final couple verses here. It says, and the word of God, can, this is from the book of Acts, and this is two verses from the book of Acts that kind of say the same thing, okay? It says, the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Then Acts 12, 24, but the word of God increased and multiplied. So I want us to look at how Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, phrases this. He says, and the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of priests became obedient to the faith. So what made the number of disciples multiply greatly? What made the number of disciples multiply greatly? The word of God increased. It is the Word of God that makes disciples, okay? Um, it is the Word of God that makes disciples, okay? And so, when the Word increases, disciples will multiply. And so, we can't make disciples apart from the Word of God. You can't jettison that. And so, if, if, we're, not, if, we're, if we're not inculcating people into the Word of God... So, if we want disciples to multiply, the Word of God has to increase. And so, so if we have a strategy as a church, it's going to be this. Preach the Word of God. Preach the Word of God. Preach the Word of God. Give people the Word of God. Because where the Word of God increases, disciples will multiply. Okay? So, we just got to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. We just gotta we just gotta stick to it. Stick to the book. Stick to the plan. Okay, as the word of God increases, disciples increase. And he uses the same lesson here, but the word of God increase and multiply to talk about the growth of the church. And so and so if we're gonna do anything, church, it's, it needs to be this. We need to devote ourselves to the word of God and giving people the word of God. Pouring it into other people's lives, not just keeping it to ourselves, right? But that's why like I'm I'm really been talking about these discipleship groups and pushing these discipleship groups. You know, I'm not just trying to, I'm not just trying to start a new, I'm not just trying to add another thing to your week, okay, just for the sake of making you busy. I'm trying to, the desire behind the groups is saying, this is God's plan, that when we gather together in smaller groups and have a little bit of accountability to where we're reading the word together, discussing the word together, praying through the word together, trying to obey the word together, reaching out to other people with the word together with a small group of people. That the that is how the word of God increases and multiplies. And when the word of God increases, things start to happen, right? And so that's why I'm, that's why you know I just really encourage you 
get involved in a discipleship group. Come talk to me. We will create a group. We'll do whatever we have to to get you to part of a discipleship group. If you're a part of another church, find a group, a small group of people to be part of where you can hold one another accountable, pour the word into one another, obey the word together, and, and share the word together. And that is how God works in the world. So as we finish out, pray for the word of God to increase in our church, neighborhoods, and communities. Pray for the number of disciples to multiply greatly. We need this. So we pray we pray about it, right? So that so we pray to do, we pray for God to do what only God can do, but we know God does it through the word. So we pray for God to work through the word, then we start preaching the word and then we wait to see what God does, right? Because God works through his word. And so God hears prayer, God works through his word. You put the two together and Things will start. Things will start to happen. Things will start to happen. Okay, so make make so join me in just some earnest prayer that the word of God would increase in our lives individually, in our church, in our neighborhood, in our community, and around the world to see God do what only He can do. So take some time and pray through this, and join back with me when you're done. All right, that's going to finish us up tonight thank you so much for joining us i hope it has been encouraging to you it's been encouraging to me to think about the power of the word of god i hope to see you this sunday uh, at uh, 9 a.m for sunday school and 10 15 for church um, but show up a little early 10 o'clock get you a coffee and some donuts enjoy some fellowship uh, and speaking uh, in w- the word of god to one another and encouragement and encouragement And that you'll be blessed by it, I'm sure. But I hope to see you this Sunday. If you need something before then, don't hesitate to ask. And um, have a great week. God bless you.